Between 1801 and 1911, the population of Britain grows from 9 million to 36 million. Industrialization brings growth so rapidly that poor housing conditions, long working hours and the spread of diseases are inevitable consequences. The British Empire continues to expand, acquiring further territories overseas. The Dominion of Canada is established in 1867, which makes it a self-governing colony of the British Empire. Many British emigrants are attracted to Canada, with prospects of better living conditions and steady employment. Thousands of emigrants depart from Liverpool on ships bound for Canada. Mass emigration to Canada brings with it the first wave of child migrants who were destitute, homeless or living in workhouses. This surplus of destitute children in Britain's growing cities meets the demand for the growing labour needs of the British dominions. Christian evangelical movements justify the migration of children as a means to improve their lives away from the perceived evils of city life. Child migrants are increasingly seen as the bricks upon which the British Empire will continue to be built. In Britain, the Children Act 1889 is the first statute to impose criminal penalties for child cruelty. Australia becomes federated as the Commonwealth of Australia in 1901. The White Australia policy is introduced with the Immigration Restriction Act, 1901. Between 1906 and 1914, the British government introduces a series of social reforms to address widespread poverty and deprivation. The 1908 Children's Charter imposes punishments for treating children cruelly. In 1909, Kingsley Fairbridge establishes the Child Emigration Society to train orphan children at farm schools in Canada and Australia. 1914. The First World War breaks out, bringing a temporary halt to the child migration schemes. Many former child migrants enlist to fight in the Canadian Armed Forces. 1922 and the Empire Settlement Act makes way for further large-scale emigration to the British territories overseas. Child migration resumes, with children being sent to Canada and Australia. The interwar years witness economic depression and mass youth unemployment. Youth migration schemes attract interest from the families of boys who see them as a career opportunity for their sons. During the 1930s, the Depression sees emigration to Canada decrease. Child migration schemes are challenged by Canadian authorities. By 1939, Canada ends its involvement with the child migration schemes. During World War II, Many more former child migrants enlist to fight in the Canadian and Australian armed forces. The newly elected Labour government in the UK establishes the welfare state to provide security from cradle to grave. With formal care systems for children in place, questions are asked about the effectiveness of the child migration schemes. In 1946, the Curtis Report advises against child migration unless benefits can be demonstrated. The Children's Bill 1947 and the UK Children Act 1948 follow. The Australian government instigates their Populate or Perish European Immigration Programme after suffering attacks on Australian soil for the first time. The booming Australian economy is a sharp contrast to war-ravaged Europe, and migrants find employment in government-assisted programs. In Australia, the Immigration Guardianship of Children Act 1946 comes into force to ensure that children who arrive unaccompanied have a legal guardian. 
child migration continues, supported by the British government during a time of post-war austerity and demands from Australia for more children. Hundreds of child migrants are also sent to southern Rhodesia, later known as Zimbabwe, and New Zealand. Despite increasing evidence of poorly married schools and poor child welfare, the schemes continue into the late 1960s. The last recorded Bernardo's party of children fly to Australia in 1967. Today, about four million Canadians are descended from child migrants, and the majority of Australia's 7,000 former child migrants still live there.